Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, where I'm here in Las Vegas for the Adobe Summit. And I'm hunting down the biggest names in business across multiple industries to try and learn how technology is transforming their business and their future. And I'm also looking at the very latest MarTech trends and how that is going to be transforming the world of marketing too. And today I've dragged Pardeep Kamat from Deloitte Digital off the show floor to find out more about personalised omnichannel experiences and how life science companies should consider adapting to this new reality in order to deliver sophisticated, engaging and personalised experiences across all channels. Sounds pretty cool, right? So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Las Vegas so you can listen in on a conversation with me and Pradeep from Deloitte Digital. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Pradeep. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Good morning, Neil. Hope you're doing well. A little bit about myself. I'm Pradeep Kamath, the principal in Deloitte Digital specifically focuses on helping my life sciences clients drive their customer transformation agenda by building and delivering innovative digital solutions. Within Deloitte, I'm part of our customer and marketing practice, where we collectively as a group focus on customer engagement, customer experience, sales, service, and marketing technology implementations as well. Location-wise, I'm based out of the Washington, D.C. area, and professionally have spent many years implementing CRM technologies across many sectors. And I would say I've been focused in life sciences for over the last eight to nine years. Again, thanks, Neil, for taking the time to connect. And I'm so excited to be talking to you today and look forward to the conversation. No, I mean, right back at you as well. I've got to ask, is is this your first Adobe Summit? or Are you somewhat of a veteran? And what are you most looking forward to this year? Well, definitely not a veteran, Neil. Uh, I would say it's been a while since I attended the last Adobe Summit. And this time, it's specifically very interesting for me, and I'll tell you in a bit. The idea for me is to look forward to meeting my clients, our Deloitte team members, uh, the Adobe partner teams. Also, I'll be trying to learn uh, more about what others are doing in the marketing space, right? Because this this is, I would say one of the major events, especially around marketing, and make it more of a learning and network, networking event. Um, as you know, in such events, there's so much energy, so much energy, and my goal is to grasp as much as I can before I leave the conference. So trying to get into learning mode as well as a networking mode. Uh, and I don't know if you were aware of it, but I am going to be on stage with one of my clients on Thursday, speaking about their marketing journey from multi, multi-channel to omni-channel and share my point of view around this topic, details about the project we implemented and lessons learned. So I would say an exciting week, and I'm looking forward to it. And for people, of course, that are listening, that are actually attending the event and just listening to this podcast ahead of Thursday, where, where can they find you for your talk on Thursday? Uh, it's a Thursday around 1 to 2 p.m. for the Adobe Speaking Session. And it's the Novo Nordisk uh, multi omni channel speaking engagement, which is in, I would say, uh, S937. Maybe I'll have to give it to you later. I don't know the exact location <laughs> of where I'm going to be. <laughs> no problem. What I'll do is I'll add the, the actual times and everything to the show notes of this podcast. So anyone listening will be able to find out exactly where you are. But I mean, what you're yeah. so right in what you're saying that there is so much energy here. And for anyone listening all over the world thinking, what am I actually missing on here? And I think that energy really encapsulates that. And one of the things that I've noticed over the last few years, and I've been fascinated about, is how the likes of Uber, Airbnb, Amazon, Spotify, Netflix have all transformed our consumer expectations. But what I find really interesting is how all these expectations are now expanding everywhere and into every area of our lives. So can you tell me more about the increasing expectations of, let's say, life sciences and life science consumers and how providers in a digital age are actually empowering customers to demand more? Well, uh, you bring up a good point, great point, Neil, especially with the change with the technologies such as Uber, Amazon, and Spotify coming into the world. 
it's a, and it's such an interesting topic, right? Uh, I have been fascinated by how these leading edge technology and experiences actually become table stakes in a few years or now even months nowadays due to the digital revolution. Uh, if you don't mind, let can I take a few minutes to go down memory lane? Of course. Uh, okay. If you're okay with it. <laughs> sure. So not too long ago, maybe 30 years back, a landline phone connection in India where I grew up took three to four years. You had to publish a request and then you would get a telephone landline after three to four years. Can you believe that? Bulky mobile phones were introduced around not more than 20 years back. But now we see how mobile phones have become a commodity or a necessity. I have two boys, 9 and 12, and I find it fascinating that they started using mobile phones and mobile devices such as iPhones and iPads when they were almost three years old. It was not by design, but because I used to have a phone, they used to get onto the phone and just start checking out of curiosity and they started using it, and, they, and there was no teaching or no uh, tutorials on how to use the mobile phone and how to navigate through apps or even the UI screen. So now, which I started as a curiosity, now they believe it's the way of life and can't imagine how we as humans could live without it. The reason why I bring this up, Neil, is due to the fact that customers now and in the future will always have an ever-changing expectation level based on their personal experiences and this constant online access, which we call as internet, right? Yeah. Customers today want personalized experiences and communication delivered when and how they want it. It's not up to the company to decide, okay, I'm going to send you an email campaign and that's it. It's the customer who demands how they want to have their communication and which way they would like to have it. In a in a publicly listed CMO Council SAP survey, 47% of respondents, that's a, almost close to 50%, have said that they have, would abandon a brand that delivers poor, impersonal, or frustrating experiences. That's the customer demand, not only to get better quality products, but also get better customer experience. And that's what has happened with the Ubers of the world, the Amazons of the world. They have revolutionized the customer experience world wherein even clients and the business clients are now demanding or even consumers are demanding that same experience uh, from the companies that they're working with. So coming back to your question on life sciences or healthcare industry, the consumer base for this healthcare life sciences industry is huge, right? And it's almost like a retail industry. The healthcare life sciences industry is transforming and now customers have access to information via mobile, online web, and through social channels. Customers are demanding more and more personal experience and content so that they can, they can make their decisions regarding their brand and product of choice and evaluate the connectivity with the company as a whole. It's not about just the product. Now they're looking at the organization, the company, and saying, who am I to this company and what does this company mean to me? Now, we have seen in the life sciences space specifically, we have seen the evolution of patient and HCP engagement portals mobile applications to address patient needs specifically by um, therapeutic areas, and patient health data reporting through wearables, especially in clinical trials. So if you're looking at the patients who are going into clinical trials, they are demanding the same experience as they would have as they would go for a product that is launched. Want to know that what's happening on which date, what, what are my scheduled appointments, how do I go to this clinical trial site and come back and also see if we can integrate that with Ubers of the world or Lyfts of the world so that when I leave from the clinical trial site, I can go back to my home without even driving my car. So there are lots of changes happening in this area of the business, Neil. And I would say that the experience uh, demand from the customer is humongous uh, and life sciences company have to transform. So do you think life sciences companies are actually getting that message that they need to adapt to this new reality and deliver those sophisticated, engaging, and personalized experiences across all the channels? Are they getting that message? Well, yes, they are, right? And if they, yeah. are, if they want to be in the successful age of digital revolution, everybody now has a chief digital officer within their organization. There is an emphasis around chief marketing officers. All of it is to make sure that the brand is well known within the consumer space and also make sure that the customer gets what they're really looking for. 
I believe most of the healthcare companies have intuitive portals, automation, cloud environments, analytics, robotics, you name it. You've heard about all this in the technology space, all of it coming together. But I feel most are still figuring out how to use all these tools, data and insights, to truly drive the human experience. Not just the customer experience, but we as humans, how do we react to it? Uh, I would say there is a need to manage appropriate, structured, unstructured customer data. So once you have that customer data, that's the only time you can derive what's the personal experience looks across these different channels, right? And help them make that informed decisions around personalization of content for marketing-related use cases. Um, if you don't mind, I can give you a use case around client and life sciences work, which, and especially which I'm talking about on Thursday. Yeah, if you could, because I think we are on this podcast and every article that we that we read out there, there are so many different tech buzzwords and customer experiences and personalization. But I think it, putting the, the use case really brings it to life, doesn't it? Yeah. So let me try to make it real for you. This is my, which is on Thursday, uh, because which you know is where I'm going to be on stage from 1 to 2 p.m. on the Adobe Summit. Uh, the client name, I would not publicly give you the client name, but... Um, but the client and I are both going to be jointly sharing the marketing and omni-channel success strategy. Okay, so this client of mine, which is a very close client, a dear client, uh, one of my favorites, is a, a pharma company established in the early 20th century, headquartered in Europe. They have been helping patients control diabetes for over 95 years, and are working to contribute toward healthier communities. Their expertise in diabetes also helps them to help people defeat other serious chronic conditions like hemophilia, growth disorders, and obesity. So we recently wrapped up a digital transformation project for the marketing department and helped them to transform this, their business in the marketing arena. So let's take an example of the marketing arena, especially around Omnichannel, as we talk about Omnichannel. I was the lead engagement partner for the Deloitte side and worked with them since the whole blueprinting phase of the project. The client's marketing department looks at customer experiences across channels and enables to scale them to commercial capabilities. It also helps them to address customer demands and pressure. They had, so they had to redesign their entire marketing operations group and figure out a way to move from a multi-channel strategy to an omni-channel strategy. So let me give you a very simple example, right? Can you believe that there would be more than 50 uncoordinated customer touch points per month. Not only for this client, but for many other clients, especially when you think about ourselves as a customer, you're looking at 50 plus uncoordinated connections with you in a month from a company. And it could happen because you would have got a marketing email, but that marketing email, the sales rep from that person would have already met the HCP and then the marketing email comes in to say, let's can you schedule an appointment. So there is no real connectivity between what's happening between the sales teams and the marketing team. And also there is no single source of truth for customer data. You know, lack of visibility into the customer preferences and behavior to better segment and target their customers. So there was a lot of these uh, nuances that we found out as part of the project. Also they had manual processes that could be in a, that could be automated and many inconsistent processes which we needed to redefine or re-engineer. And Neil, this is just an example, right? There are similar use cases prevalent across the healthcare life sciences industry. In this example, it was very clear to us that the client needed to own the data, the decisioning part of it, and the delivery to engage to their patient. Data in terms of the customer data to make sure that it is you have an HCP and patient, you don't treat them a little bit different, you don't treat them differently, but it's more of a customer data rather than having them as an HCP, healthcare provider data versus patients. We needed to make sure that you have the data with all the preferences that would make sure that you're decisioning about how to run the campaign and how to make sure that what you're sending to your customers is personalized based on their own preferences. And then which channels, and when I say delivery, it's a good channel. I, as a person, may not be using SMS at all. I may be an email preferred person who prefers email or the younger generation may be looking at Facebook. So why do I need to send the same message across three channels rather than that 
let me send it to the person with that preferred channel approach as well. So the strategy was this around to make sure that they own their own customer data platform. And that was we had Deloitte has a proprietary uh, customer data platform that we bring to our clients. So we use that. Uh, you wanted to use that innovative technology such as Adobe, campaign management, AEM, to make and make sure that it's all well integrated within their ecosystem. For a customer, when you think about it, we as customers and living in somebody's database was designed and built by integrating data from all the MarTech, ad tech data, generating a customer ID in order to drive engagement and real-time experiences. We had Adobe Experience Platform. We used Adobe Campaign Management, Experience Manager, to build the front-facing campaign execution platform. And one of the most important things is there were, it's not like it was being started from scratch. There was a lot, there were a lot of tools, a lot of technology platforms, AWS, you name it, all of that were existing within the client's environment. But what we wanted to do was not uproot all of that, but make sure that we utilize as much as we can the technology stack that the client had in terms of their CRM, their cloud environments, data sources, their vendors, their agencies, all bring together and then create this, good, I would say, a true record of the customer that would then help them drive their campaigns for the future. Uh, I would say this is, again, a strategy which we kind of use now rather than uprooting everything, but trying to build the best of breed into the environment and then trying to build a customer data platform that is so much so important for this specific space around omni-channel so that you know who you're targeting, why you're targeting, and the, met- the delivery method and, or, or for targeting to that specific site. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, I was going to say, for everybody listening there that may be thinking, well, how did you do that and how easy was it? So I'm right in saying that it's just Deloitte's customer data solution that's actually integrated with Adobe's campaign management platform. That's how you did it, isn't it? And for people that are listening that wanting to maybe replicate or follow in your foot in your footsteps of that client, how easy is it to deliver those game-changing kind of moments? Well, I said it's not the technology. What I feel is never the hard part. Yeah. Right. It's what we really need to do is get that potential will will to do it, build it as part of our priorities to do it. Make sure that we have a focus on the customer and the reason why we are doing it, whether it's a project, mini small project or a large project in itself. What I would believe is. If you think you are going to be a customer experience company, you are going to make sure that your customer gets the best experience wherever they interact with you, whether it's the sales cycle when a sales rep meets you or it's the marketing connection with your marketing agencies or whether you're even going for a call center or you're doing a service call, you need to make sure that the experience for that customer is unique and it's, it's tailored towards them rather than making it very general. That's, the, that's why I think the, one of the folk, fundamental focus areas which companies have to do. And changing that is not a technology problem, I would say. The changing that is more of a cultural shift and a mindset shift that companies have to ex- execute and then the technology will follow. And that's my personal opinion, which I always talk to clients about. So looking forward, I mean, what are the biggest challenges and also opportunities ahead as those personalized omnichannel experiences actually become the new standard expectation level across all industries? Yeah, I think um, this this is prevalent across, this is being omnichannel, the word has been used for three, four, maybe more than four or five years back. And it was typically, it came out as a multi-channel experience you know, trying to get to your customers to different channels, whether it be chat, whether it be server, call center, whether it be the sales rep in person, or it's an inside sales connection. And the part which was everybody was doing it in their own silos uh, and by own brands, not even think about a company with multiple brands and every brand reaching out to you in its own way and not having the connectivity tissue among them. I think that... When you look at that part of the equation, this is where the heart of the problem lies. So for for what I feel, so the the biggest challenge, and which every challenge there is an opportunity, I think the first part is making sure that you get your customers right, the data right. Acquiring them, you know, in terms of if you're getting third-party customer data and or saying potential prospects, making sure that they're 
not in your database and making sure that uh, you don't call your existing customer as a prospect. And I'm like, no, oh, I'm, I'm a customer. Why are you calling me as a lead manager or a prospect? Uh, funnily, just before this podcast, I got a call from my mortgage company. And I had closed their account maybe a month back. And they are calling me to say how I can use you know, a loan agreement on my existing uh, extension on my existing loan. And I said, well, guys, my loan was closed a month back. You guys don't even have that information that my loan was closed, you know? So the part of the problem is, you know, getting the customer data right, making sure that your customer preferences are being tracked properly, and building that trust with that customer. And making sure this is not a one-time action move. This has to keep on going. Continuous revolution, digital disruption is happening. And we have to constantly keep evolving our databases, making sure that we know what the customer has changed from their preferences standpoint, where they have moved, what's their location, and all that stuff. So I would say that, you know, we need to, as, a, as all my clients are looking at it from an opportunity standpoint and a challenge standpoint, is get that customer data right. Technology is there and build that culture. And as technology evolves, be ready to adapt to it, right? Because there would be innovation that's coming in. The more you try to innovate within your organization, it's better for you and your customers because even talent in your internal employees and your talent would be internal customers where you have to keep them happy and you have to make sure that they get the latest technology to work on as well. And for anyone that cannot attend this year's summit and don't have time or they're just in a different different part of the world and can't visit your booth or see your keynote on Thursday, what is the key message that you want everybody to walk away with? Well, first of all, if they missed it, then they missed a lot. They didn't attend my session. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. Just, just kidding. Um, well, I would say, again, going back to, I have spent you know most of part of my career in the customer engagement and experience space. And every client I meet agrees that great customer experience is required to manage brand loyalty and trust. And as I said, however, most of them are always constrained by their organization or department of priority. My recommendation would be to look at each project, program, or initiative with a customer lens and ask, what's the end customer benefit or outcome? What is in it for our customer? The more, we, the more we move away from the transactional mindset and make it more of a connectivity and an experience mindset, it will help all of us build that trust with our customers, right? And I would simply say that customers who trust will give you more data, accurate data, and with the accurate data means getting you better insights into the customer and more insight to get better engagement which ultimately will generate more revenue, right? So if you look at it from the other side, you're actually helping your company uh, deliver more sales. Absolutely. And finally, before I do let you go, is there anything else that you can share about the road ahead for Deloitte Digital or maybe even leave us with a couple of teasers before you go? Sure. I think um, a teaser, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's think about this. Yeah, but here, here we are, right? So first of all, and I'll go to a little bit philosophical with you. First of all, we're all humans. And we are all, most of us crave the same, almost similar things. Like we need to have a good experience. Whether we are traveling, whether we are going for a morning coffee, we want to have good experience. And since the start of time, right, we as humans have always connected with each other and built our own experiences in life. Now, in today's day and age, technology and data have also made us connect in new, amazing ways that was never possible before. I love that I can FaceTime with my kids when I'm on the road, in my Uber, they want to see my hotel rooms, and then uh, now that I go to Vegas, they'll be like, what are you FaceTime us and show us how your room looks like? And discuss, and also discuss about the day, right? But also, however, with technology, we also feel less human at times. For example, we wonder what it means when we have a robot that will be available in a supermarket or in a store when you go in the next time. They're not interacting with humans, but with the robot, right? So in social media, we are connected with a lot of people, but we sometimes feel lonely as we lose the human connection. I think the, the ability and drive to build strong human connection is going to help all our companies transform their business. 
for example, airlines are no longer in the transportation industry, but in the connecting people business. Banks are not in the money lending business, but life moments business. Healthcare is transforming itself to a wellness and fitness business. So why should we treat our customers as a single credit customer? Shouldn't we all get out of this transactional mindset and think about elevating the human experience? So with, with a teaser for you, you know, it's with cloud, cognitive, robotic, blockchain, you name it, all latest developments. I think we should never forget that we're all serving our fellow human beings. So the next gen experience is going to be focusing more and more on elevating the human experience and how we show up for each other as clients, customers, and as, as even as other human beings. That's my I couldn't agree more. What a beautiful moment to end on there. And if we do have if we do have people listening, obviously all over the world that want to find out more about what you do at Deloitte Digital or how Deloitte's customer data solution integrates with Adobe Campaign Management Platform and so much more, can you just remind them of where they can find you guys online and maybe even contact a member of your team if they do have any other questions? Yeah, I think the best way to connect with me would be via LinkedIn, uh, pretty. Kamath, and luckily there is only one Pradeep Kamath in Deloitte Digital. And we have our booth, Adobe Booth, we have the Adobe Booth Summit. Uh, so come over to our booth, meet us. We'll be more than happy to chat about how do you really elevate the human experience and change the game for your customers. Like you said at the very beginning of this episode, there is so much energy here at this year's summit. And it does seem that everyone's working towards the same thing, no matter what industry they're in. And that's all about moving away from that transactional mindset. And essentially, it seems that experiences are becoming more important than the transaction itself. But uh, more than anything, just a big thank you for taking the time out to come and speak with me today. Thank you, Pradeep. Sure. Thanks again, Neil. Thanks for your time. And thanks for this uh, wonderful conversation. What I find really interesting here is how the increasing expectations of healthcare consumers and providers in a digital age is actually empowering customers to demand more. Because we're taking those experiences from Netflix, Amazon, Spotify, Uber, Airbnb, and bringing them into every other area of our lives now. And for those reasons alone, yes, life sciences companies should consider adapting to this new reality in order to deliver sophisticated, engaging and personalised experiences across all channels. And I think it's important to understand that it's not businesses that are driving this change, it's customers. But what I find most exciting, of course, is we're not just using words like artificial intelligence and machine learning as just another meaningless shiny buzzword that we have to say three or four times, whether that be in a podcast, a magazine, or an online article. We're talking about how teams can integrate AI into existing work streams to actually drive revenue and tangible results. It's not about the tech. It's about that value add. And that is my kind of language. So are you at this year's summit? And do you want to talk about everything that you've seen over a hot coffee or an ice cold beer? Or are you equally listening on the other side of the world, wanting to share your direct insights with me or the audience? Well, wherever you are, I'm here for you. So please, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. You can tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, and I may even post a few pics over on Instagram, which is also at Neil C. Hughes too. And I do have so many interviews booked in this week, so I must warn you that your podcast feeds are about to get bombarded with some amazing guests for you to dip in and dip out of, depending on which topics really interest you. So I better get out of here because I've got another interview (laughs) lined up in just a few minutes. So a big thank you to Pradeep for joining me today and an even bigger thank you to each and every one of you listening to this Daily Tech Podcast. So I will see you here again tomorrow. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.